If you're conducting loss of function genomic studies, you've got powerful tools at your disposal, including RNAi and CRISPR-Cas9. Both can reduce or effectively silence gene expression, but they're not overlapping technologies. To learn what's best for your needs, it helps to understand a few key distinctions. Endogenous versus exogenous. RNAi takes advantage of the eukaryotic endogenous microRNA machinery, requiring only a small RNA trigger for gene knockdown. On the other hand, CRISPR-Cas9 is exogenous to eukaryotes, as it is derived from an adaptive immune system in bacteria. Therefore, the native bacterial protein, Cas9, must be delivered or expressed with high efficiency, in addition to a guide RNA, to achieve gene knockout. Knockdown versus knockout. RNAi knocks the gene down in the cytoplasm at the mRNA level, but does not completely eliminate expression. In contrast, CRISPR-Cas9 works in the nucleus to modify genomic DNA, in many cases producing a total knockout. Transient versus permanent effect. With RNAi, the knockdown effect is transient, lasting a few days, or longer with ongoing expression of a lentiviral shRNA. The transient knockdown achieved with RNAi is suitable for most assays. Alternatively, CRISPR-Cas9 causes a permanent, heritable change in the genome, so knockout cell lines can be created through clonal isolation or used to create an animal model to study a genetic disease. Specificity. With RNAi, you can target anywhere along a transcript, and you may cause silencing of unintended targets due to partial complementarity. Alternatively, CRISPR-Cas9 can only target regions adjacent to a certain nucleotide motif, or PAM sequence, and more stringent target complementarity is required before the DNA is cut. In summary, you can use RNAi or CRISPR-Cas9 on their own, or as complementary tools for achieving powerful results. No matter what, there's a Dharmacon product for you, with a broad selection of optimized tools for high-confidence functional analysis. Learn more.